Hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch, Michael Knapp, Michael Knapp Leather. On today's episode, you're going to get to see me hand make two straps for a fellow YouTuber. His name is Robert Holly. He is a truck driver out of Arkansas, and he works for Oakley Trucking. The name of his YouTube channel is Oakley Hopper Driver. Check it out sometime, Oakley Hopper Driver. And also, they're actively seeking drivers right now, so I'm unabashedly giving them a plug for Robert. Uh, leave his direct email in the show more description below uh, this video. You can contact Robert directly if you're looking for work. If you know somebody who's a driver, let him know. Get a hold of Robert. But he's also a watch guy. So he contacted me about a month ago and ordered two straps, a black alligator strap with double row white stitching for this Omega Seamaster with a white dial. Absolutely gorgeous watch. And also this Tudor, it's actually a Black Bay 41 with the deep blue dial, snowflake hand, smooth bezel, no date. It's just my kind of watch. I love clean, classic watches, no date. That's why I guess, you know, I'm kind of a Milgauss and an Oyster Perpetual OP kind of a guy. I mean, I don't ever time anything, so a date complication for me is about really the most I need. But hey, if you're into complications, that's super cool. I mean, that's what Strap a Watch is all about, promoting enthusiasm for the wearing of watches, especially mechanical automatic watches and of course, leather straps. So the blue one, uh, he actually had ordered intense blue Horween shell cordovan, but after matching them up between the Shinky Haikaku deep blue and the Horween, the Shinky Haikaku was a better match with the dial. So that's what I ended up making for him. So you're gonna see me hand make those two straps today. And also I've got some bonus footage of some newer stuff here in the shop of what I put together in storing alligator and storing my shell cordovan. And also I found a little friend outside the other day. So you're gonna see that. Stick around after the intro, we'll get right into it. Buddy, you okay? Huh? What's the matter? You can't fly? You all right? What happened to you? Huh? What happened? You okay? <laughs> You scared me. I'd pick you up, but I don't want to get my smell on you. You're so pretty. Yes, you are. You're so pretty. Yeah. I hope you're okay. I don't want Billy to get you. I put her inside. Poppy's got to get to work. Oh boy, that was weird. So here we are at the shop. Michael Knapp Leather. Gotta get my key. And here we are, getting ready for the Robert Holly build. 
So you're going to watch me here put together this rack system that I came up with to store my shell cordovan chips. You know what that is? That is a pizza rack. Those are 20-inch screen pizza trays. And I'm using some zip ties to lock everything down. And you'll see in here where I have it mounted. This is my storage room, you guys. You've never seen this on Strap a Watch before. So there it is. Mounted on the wall. There's the rack system I put together for housing my alligator hides. There's the back door to the right. You probably didn't even know I had a back door to the studio. But it's pretty cool. Uh, and now I'm not stacking all the shell cordovan on top of one another in that bag. It used to be underneath my cutting table and a shelf. Oh boy, this is much better. There's the intense blue Horween shell cordovan that uh, Rob had ordered for the tutor. And I'm looking for some black alligator. I got a few separate hides. And uh, I've just ordered another hide of black alligator, brown alligator, and several chips of uh, Horween shell cordovan. I've talked about that in the last few episodes, so I'm waiting on that. Here we go back into the studio. So a couple of announcements I want to make. You're going to be seeing me cutting out the various leather components for wa Rob's uh, watch drafts. But uh, first announcement is for next weekend, I will not be putting out a strap -a watch show. There's a few good reasons for that. Number one is this past week, I received two separate orders from two gentlemen, one for six straps and one for 10 straps. I had 21 orders already and several of those were multiple straps, you know, two or three straps. Um, so I'm at 24 orders right now, but well over 40 straps that I need to get out. And the other factor is that's where I was comparing and that's the Shinky Haikaku. So that's, I'm glad we switched that out, Rob. Um, the other factor is o Oshin O'Malley of the Timeless Watch Channel. Uh, just emailed me yesterday. He has received the two straps that I just recently made and shipped to him. So he just uh, emailed me yesterday, in fact, to tell me that, yes, they have arrived. Um, so last year when I made him three separate straps, he did three separate plugs on three separate shows. And the tsunami hit. Now, I am not complaining. Please don't think I'm complaining. Uh, but last year, during a three-week period of time, I received over 60 orders. So I am just trying to get my head above water. I do not want to have that feeling of being absolutely overwhelmed. I would say still currently, I am at about a four-week turnaround time. I was getting to about three weeks. Uh, but uh, with these new orders, it's looking like um, it's going to be up to about four weeks again. And we'll see what happens uh, if, if Ocean decides to do anything with those straps. He is not under any obligation. Ocean, if you're watching this, you're under no obligation to plug me at all. Okay, I just want you to know that. And uh, you're seeing me here cutting out all of the various components to put together. I have a couple of uh, spacer leathers for that alligator. And uh, the Shinky Aikaku is pretty good thick leather. I had to actually skive some of the components uh, down below to just to, to kind of thin it out towards the point end. But that's what this is. I'm, I'm putting in that spacer leather. Guys, there's so many uh, steps to making a watch strap. It takes me on average about eight hours. And so, I mean, you would be bored to death if I filmed the whole thing. I try to keep my shows under 20 minutes. That's kind of my own personal policy. But um, if you've watched a lot of my shows, you'll see various different steps that sometimes I showcase some steps, sometimes I don't. It's just kind of where I was out in the filming that day and... Um, you know, the editing that day. I try to film quite a bit. If I'm doing a show on a particular strap, I try to film quite a bit of the various steps. But, 
You don't want to see me hand uh, sanding for an hour the edges and uh, waiting on glue to dry and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, and I have to speed some of this stuff up just to try to get it under, like this shows uh, about 18 and a half minutes long. So, you know, and that's kind of a longer episode. I try to go 12 to say 18 minutes. These are the pads and yeah, they're longer pads. These are 2.5 millimeter in thickness pads. I still got bombarded with questions about pads. So that's what they are, and this is a long number two. Both these straps are long number two straps, so they're very long straps, so the, the, the pads are long. Pads length will depend on the size of the strap, okay? Each one can be completely unique and different. It all depends. Let's say, like, um, you know, I'm making six straps for one watch, right? They're all going to be pretty uniform the same. They really will be. But uh, they still will have their own little unique character to them. I mean, no hand-made product will absolutely be like machine-made, exactly the same. I've said this before. Getting a handmade strap, think about it as a sculpture or a photograph, as a, a, a piece of art, a painting, as opposed to a photograph. Okay, so a photograph would be a machine-made mass produced strap a handmade strap is like a piece of art guys okay that's the big difference and you know we're dealing with leather is an imperfect product uh we're dealing with imperfect hands of man me uh i i strive to do my very best all the time but yeah i mean i make mistakes everybody makes mistakes and if I do make a mistake, I'm usually very upfront about it with a customer and I let them know and I did make a mistake on this trap and I was right up front with Rob and I'll showcase that to you guys shortly. Dan Baldwin, my ninth subscriber, you had inquired about this. That is my Regad machine. I'm doing a second pass. I have it set 190 degrees there, buddy. Um, and that was just to burnish that edge and put it in that decorative indent along the edge of the keeper the main keepers and is the secondary keeper this is the bottom of the keepers and i always apply tokenol it's a gum burnishing product it comes in black brown and clear so i'm using black on the black alligator and clear on the blue and it uh, helps to protect the leather it really does it makes it kind of nice and slick and uh, I, I feel I want the leather as protected as possible by the time it leaves my studio and uh, arrives to a customer. Here I am getting ready to inset the quick release lug pins. A lot of people have seen this step, but I wanted to share a recommendation for everyone, especially people with modern Rolex watches, okay? Not so much vintage, but say anything from about 1990-ish to the present day. All Rolex of today, the modern Rolexes, truly are made for their bracelets. Whether it's their Jubilee or Oyster bracelets, um, they're not really made for <laughs> leather straps, guys. They're not. Now, it can be done, absolutely. I have you know, total proof of that. But uh, it's highly recommended to get curved lug pins. Why? The reason is, on a Rolex watch, once you get the, the bracelet off, the bezel, it, uh, think of it kind of like a crescent moon. It protrudes into the lug area, like a, like a thumbnail. And it's very sharp on the bottom side. And the lugs them, themselves are short. And the, the pinholes to hold the lug pins are set very close to the watch head. The, all those three things uh, make it where the, the clearance for a leather strap to clear that, that bottom sharp edge of that bezel in the very middle where the leather wraps around the lug pin uh, has to be thinner than paper. Okay, it's... 
and to alleviate it causing any mark. You've seen me do this on some of my straps even in past episodes. I've talked about it. I've showed it to to everybody. Is to alleviate that, is to just get curved lug pins. I think it, the aesthetics of it are much better on a Rolex. And we're just making sure we have enough clearance and tolerance so that that never will happen. Okay, now I still to this day get guys like, well, I want to be able to interchange straps easily. I still want quick release. And I tell them, okay, I'm going to, you know, if it's leaving a mark, it's going to leave a mark. Um, And that's just how it is. I mean, you're the one wanting this. I'll sky that leather paper thin or even thinner than paper. Um, But, uh, you know, the chances are it's still going to happen. It just, you know, even with 1.5 millimeter diameter lug pins, I recently talked about that. And this is the double row stitching right here on the buckle end of the black alligator. But um, lug pins come in two diameters of thickness, 1.5 and 1.8. So 1.8 is your heavy duty. You could not use that on a Rolex watch. Any other brand, really, you're pretty cool. You're safe. But Rolexes get curved lug pins, guys. All right? I've been, you know, talking to a lot of people lately about it. And you guys, I got to tell you, I mean, I'm in, like, email jail for about... (laughs) An hour a day bombarded with question after question about stuff kind of like this. So here's final product. You just saw the black alligator with the double row stitching. Here's the blue for the Tudor. Turned out really cool. There is one little stitching flaw on both sides, both straps. And I'll show you right here. Bottom left corner. See that? That little jog right there. And that was only... I think uh, was just in pricking the stitching holes going underneath the the main keeper. Um, And I was really tired when I made these. I was in a rush to get these to Rob. He knew that as well. I was right up front with him. And I even told him, I said, listen, you know, uh, I'm not happy with that little piece of stitching, but I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to make you another strap, free, gratis. You just pick what you want. And he picked Red Alligator. So, Rob, I've already cut out the uppers of that, and uh, you'll be getting that probably mid-next week. But here it is, the blue one on his tutor. Thanks for the pictures. I really appreciate it, Rob. I think it looks great. You know, that's just a a very minor aesthetic thing that nobody's going to see because the point end will go into the keeper and cover those two spots up. So, and that was it, the black strap on his Omega. If you like this show, you like my channel, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell notification, all those things that we're supposed to say. But here's the final product of both sets. So listen, I had a lot of fun getting to know you, Rob. Thank you so much. I hope this, uh, these last you a long time. God bless you all, and until next time, keep on ticking.